The movie starts with Abby leaving her hometown, Vegas. She hops on a bus leaving for Sacramento and looks sad as she emails her dad, apologizing to him for running away. She says that she needs a fresh start and that she doesn't want to keep playing poker anymore. She's done bailing him out and now only wants to have a normal life with kids her age. The bus drops her at Sacramento Community College and Abby is greeted by her best friend, America. They reunite with a hug and America comments on Abby's new clothes. She looks like a Catholic schoolgirl. Abby tells her that this is the new her. America takes Abby back to her dorm because they're roommates now. After she settles down, America tells Abby about her new boyfriend. His name is Shepley and America is head over heels for him. She tells Abby that Shepley is excited to meet her and he's taking them out tonight. Abby tries to get out of it by saying that she's tired from the bus ride, but America manages to convince her. At night, they arrive at a shady place and Abby is skeptical about everything. When she enters the room, Shelby tells her that she is not to speak about the circle because it's a secret. Abby is confused about what he means when the MC announces the Knights fight. There is a new guy, Merrick Young, up against the circle's reigning champion, Travis Mad Dog Maddox. When Abby realizes what this is, she decides this isn't for her and is about to leave when she bumps into Travis. It's an instant attraction for Abby and it's written all over her face. As Travis excuses himself, Abby can't help but stay back just because she can't take her eyes off him. As the fight begins, Travis lands blow after blow, and defeating his opponent seems like a piece of cake for him. Watching him play fascinates Ab. Even Travis seems distracted by Abby's presence. As he knocks his opponent down, he asks Abby if she's new there, but before they can talk more, Travis gets attacked. The fight continues and Travis ends up punching the guy so hard that blood spatters on Abby's sweater and ruins it. When Abby is about to leave, she gets accidentally pushed and is about to fall but Travis saves her. Abby looks at him like she's never seen a guy more attractive than him. Travis tells her that he doesn't think her standing in the front is good for him because he never gets distracted like that. He apologizes for ruining her sweater and addresses her as a pigeon. The match ends and Abby returns to her dorm. She's still completely infatuated with Travis and can't stop thinking about him. She thinks about him while in the shower and even dreams about him at night. Abby's attraction takes her by surprise. In the morning, Abby drugs out piles of cash from her mattress and meets with the bursar to submit the fee for her semester. The bursar tells her that they don't accept payment in cash and she needs to set up a bank account or use a card for it. Abby tells her that she's in the process of doing so but for the time being can only manage this. When the bursar asks if Abby's parents can help her out, Abby tells her that it's complicated because she hasn't spoken to her mom in years and her dad isn't the best guy. The bursar allows Abby to pay in cash but just for this semester and Abby is saved. She meets up with America and tells her about her morning. America worries about what Abby will do when she runs out of money. Abby says she'll either get a job or a scholarship but that's something she can figure out later. Shepley joins them and Abby gets around to asking him about the guy from last night. She wonders who he is and America tells her that Travis is Shepley's cousin and that he goes to school with them. Abby is surprised to know that Travis even goes to school. Travis overhears this when he arrives there. At first, he can't seem to remember Abby but Shepley reminds him that he ruined her sweater last night. Travis makes a snarky comment about how he's ruined a lot of sweaters. He suddenly remembers Abby and calls her Pigeon yet again. Abby doesn't seem too pleased by that random nickname. Travis kisses Abby's hand in a gentlemanly way but Abby is not impressed by his tricks. She tells him that he isn't her type, but Travis seems to believe he's everybody's type. Later in class, while the lecture is going on, Abby checks out Travis's pictures on Instagram. She can't help but feel so attracted to him and finds him very hot. Travis, who is sitting right behind her, notices her doing that and starts teasing her about it. Embarrassed, Abby tries to defend herself but the teacher catches her talking. She reprimands Abby in front of everyone and asks her a question which Abby answers with confidence. Seeing as she has both beauty and brains, Travis is even more impressed by her. Abby asks him why he's bothering her. Travis thinks she's sending him mixed signals. Abby refuses having done that and tells him to stop with the antics because she will never sleep with him. Travis says that he isn't trying to do that, he only wants to take her to dinner. Despite her many attempts at getting him to back off, Travis tells her that he'll pick her up at 8. Later that evening, he shows up at her dormitory and finds Abby dressed in sweats. She refuses to dress up because they aren't going on a date. When Travis asks her to get on the bike, Abby refuses. She hates bikes. But Travis is pretty persistent and Abby has no choice but to hop on. Then, when Travis buys her dinner, Abby makes sure to split the cost because it's not a date. Travis is appalled by her stubbornness. Abby tells her that she doesn't detest him, she just doesn't want to be another notch on his bedpost. Travis likes how smart Abby is. He proposes that they can at least be friends if not anything else. Abby agrees to it on only one condition. They will be friends with no benefits. Travis takes her offer and it's a done deal. As they continue walking, Travis tells them that his family home is nearby. Abby teases him for being a mama's boy and he tells her that his mother passed away when he was young. At first, she doesn't believe him but when she realizes her mistake, Abby feels terrible. 
Travis doesn't take it to heart. He goes on to tell her that it's just his father and his four brothers in the house. Abby wonders why Travis fights underground and he tells her it's because it pays well. College isn't cheap. When Travis asks her about her parents, Abby doesn't reveal much other than that she has them. Before things can get interesting, Abby leaves for her dorm, telling Travis that this wasn't a date and dinner is over. Next day, while on her run, Abby accidentally hits a guy with a frisbee. She instantly feels bad seeing that the guy is in a lot of pain. The guy takes her apology, knowing that she didn't do it on purpose, and introduces himself as Parker. The two part ways amicably and the meet cute is over. While showering at the dorm, the water supply gets turned off, and Abby has no choice but to stay with America and Shepley. They are both more than happy to let her stay but Shepley warns her to stay out of Travis's room. When she finds out that Travis is also there, Abby wants to run away from there. However, America convinces her and Shepley tells her that Travis likes her and he wouldn't mind her presence around the apartment. Not having a choice, Abby decides to stay. At night, when Abby is studying for her test the next day, she gets a message from her dad asking her to call or text him back. Abby ignores it and hears a noise coming from Travis's room. When she goes to check, she finds Travis in a compromising position with a woman. Embarrassed to have caught that sight, Abby runs out of there. When they're done, the woman comes out and leaves her number with Abby. Abby goes looking for Travis who scares her by appearing behind her out of nowhere. He teases her for snooping into his room. Abby hands him the number and Travis throws it away without looking at it. Abby is appalled at his behavior, but Travis tells her that he doesn't owe that woman anything and that whatever they did was consensual. Travis offers Abby to use his bed to sleep at night but Abby is vehemently against it. She refuses to sleep in his bed. Travis tells her that the only person who sleeps on his bed is him and that it's sacred ground. Abby wonders why he's allowing her to do it and he tells her it's because she isn't going to sleep with him. Abby takes him up on the offer and sets up camp in Travis's bed as she prepares for a biology test. A lot of surprises await her when Abby opens Travis' bedside drawer and sees a bunch of rubbers and other toys. She is mortified and instantly closes it and proceeds to sanitize her stuff. When Travis returns after taking a shower, Abby fascinatedly watches him as he changes into underwear and then pretends to be asleep. Travis lays down next to her and Abby remains scared awake the entire time. Morning comes and Travis has a morning accident. In her sleep, Abby touches him and mumbles in her sleep about a mouse. Awkward and in a tight position, Travis wakes her up and Abby gets up with a scream so loud, it wakes America and Shepley. The two rush to Travis's room only to find Abby hitting him and calling him sick. Travis tells her that it was she who touched him and his condition is a real medical condition called parasympathetic nerve response. Speaking of biology, Abby is reminded of her tests and rushes out of there in a hurry. She even slips on her way to class but manages to ace her test. After her test, Abby runs into Parker. She asks him about his condition now and after assuring her that he is okay, Parker asks her out for dinner. At this time, Abby spots Travis behind Parker and ignores him. She accepts Parker's invitation and gets ready in a pretty dress that night. She seems happy to be going out with Parker and ignores Travis's attempts at apologizing to her for the incident that morning. Abby continues to go on her date with Parker and has a nice time. While they're leaving, Parker gets a message about a show that night that he wants to attend. He invites Abby along and the two reach the venue together. Meanwhile, Travis, who is supposed to play that match, is more bothered about why Abby is still not returning his texts. Shepley tells him to focus on the match and forget about Abby. When Abby finds out that Parker has brought her to a boxing match and that Travis will be playing that match, she excuses herself and gets out of there. Outside the arena, Abby runs into Travis who gets mad at her for not answering his texts, and then showing up there wearing that sensual dress. Just then, Travis's opponent of the night passes them by and tells Travis that he will crush him. While Travis doesn't care about the threat, Abby is worried about his life. Travis mocks her concern for her, admitting that she likes him. Abby tells him she only cares about him as she would about any other human being. Travis tells her that the other fighter won't even lay a hand on him. Abby doesn't believe his overconfidence and this provokes Travis to make a bet with her. If the other fighter lands a single punch on him, Travis would abstain for three months. But if he manages to win the fight unscathed, Abby will have to stay with him for a whole month. Abby boldly accepts the challenge but makes one thing very clear, she is never sleeping with him. Travis tells her that he doesn't want to sleep with her, he just wants to be around her because she is good for him. As the match begins, Abby starts cheering for Travis's opponent to win. Travis takes her challenge and manages to evade all the blows thrown by his rival. In the end, Travis wins the bet and Abby realizes the gravity of the situation she just got herself into. Travis starts acting like an animal and celebrates his win enthusiastically. When Abby tells him about her new situation to Parker, he doesn't feel too good about it but she assures him that she doesn't like Travis that way, and that they aren't even friends. Parker understands this and they sort things out. 
They are just about to kiss when Travis scares them by screaming outside the car. Parker is terrified that Travis will hurt him and forces Abby to get out of the car immediately. That night, while Abby unpacks her stuff in Travis's room, she gets angry at him for landing them in this situation. Her aggression scares Travis but Abby is relentless. She lays down on her side and warns him to never cross the line between them and to never touch her. Days pass by one by one and Travis and Abby, despite some minor setbacks, start to settle into a routine with each other. They have dinner with Shepley and America and train together in the park. One day, Travis even takes Abby home to meet his family for Sunday dinner. When they arrive, Abby gets a close look at what the Maddox men are like. They're all hooligans like Travis but they fiercely respect their father. Travis's father Jeff introduces himself to Abby. At dinner, Abby is introduced to the eldest Maddox brother, Thomas. Before they eat, Travis says grace, and the dinner begins. Soon the boys decide to play a game of poker and Abby cautiously takes herself out of the game. A while later, Abby joins the game when the guys goad her into it by saying that they'll go easy on her. Abby tells them it isn't a matter of them going easy on her, it's a matter of her going easy on them. Soon, the game starts, and much to everyone's surprise, Abby wins the first round. They blame it on beginner's luck, but when Abby continues to win each round, the boys can't help but admit that she's got skills. Abby refuses to take the money she won, but Jeff insists that she should since she's won it fair and square. Thomas asks her where she learned to play this well and Abby tells him that her dad taught her to play back home in Vegas. That is when Jeff tells them a story about a high-stakes poker player, Abernathy, who had a poker prodigy for a daughter who would always bail him out. He taught his daughter to play and as she got better, he got worse. The boys remember that her name was Lucky 13 and Thomas shows Abby an article, pointing it out to her that they know it's her. Travis is surprised by this, but the boys are overjoyed at being hustled by Lucky 13. They start taking pictures with Abby like she is a celebrity. More days go by, and Abby and Travis's relationship gets better and better. They play pranks on each other and start to enjoy each other's company more and more. When America points out the growing closeness between them, Abby tells that she finds Travis's physique appealing but knows better than to court excitement just for the heck of it. She's had enough crazy in her life and the last thing she needs is more of it. Later that night, while working, Abby gets messages from Mick saying that he misses her and only wants to know if she's safe. Abby texts back that she misses him too. She gets distracted when Travis shows up. They settle in bed and Travis tells her that he knows it's her birthday in a few days. Abby flicks him for eavesdropping on her conversation. Travis gets back at her by tickling her and the two end up entangling. While messing around, things get hot and heavy between the two and they end up making out. But soon, Abby pushes Travis off him and this pisses him off. He can't keep up with her mixed signals and is about to walk off when Abby stops him to talk. Travis tells her she knows exactly how he feels about her but Abby tells him that she doesn't feel the same. He knows she's lying because it's so obvious she has feelings for him as well. Abby gets mad at him and calls him a In the heat of the moment, she kisses him again and things get steamy. But Abby quickly pushes him away and meets America in the bathroom where she tells her about the incident. Abby can't seem to control herself when she's with him and she confesses to America that she might be in love with Travis. Meanwhile, in the bedroom, Travis is nervous and waits for Abby to return. Just then, Mick texts Abby, asking to meet her, and Travis reads the message on her laptop screen. He angrily storms out of the apartment and goes AWOL for the whole night. Abby looks for him everywhere and worries about him but Travis doesn't respond to her texts. He returns the next morning, drenched in alcohol, with a cat in hand. He calls the cat Tabby and Shepley tries to remind him that the car is their neighbor's and not a stray for him to keep. When Travis sees Abby, he taunts her for still being there. Abby tells him that she was worried about him and was up all night. He taunts her again that she shouldn't be worried about her boyfriend and tells her about the text he saw on her computer from Mick. Abby finally tells him that Mick is her father. Travis realizes his mistake and feels pretty stupid about his reaction. But Abby is in no mood to forgive him after he invaded her privacy, and then ghosted her for the night. Travis apologizes to her and says that he messed up, but Abby only thinks he just showed her who he truly is. She leaves there in anger. Later that day, Parker finds Abby sleeping in the library. They catch up over some takeout and Parker tells her that he's going to be a pediatrician. When he asks Abby about her goals, she tells him that she's still figuring it out. When Parker gets distracted by a text, he offers to get out of there and Abby agrees. Parker brings Abby to the sorority house where she gets a surprise birthday party. America and Shepley are waiting for her along with countless other people. Abby is truly surprised and America tells her that this was all Travis's doing. This was the only way he could think of to apologize to her. Abby goes to talk to Travis but their conversation leads to nothing but more awkwardness between them. Abby tells America that tonight she needs to get sloshed and the two set out to drink the night away. Soon, Abby loses track of her drinking and starts to have a lot of fun. A few hours into the party, Parker tells her that he's leaving but Abby tries to stop him by dancing with him. She purposely gets close to him so that she can make Travis jealous and Parker being a smart guy, makes it out. He tells her that Travis is in the back room and she needs to see this thing through with him. 
Abby refuses to accept she has any feelings for Travis but when Parker tries to kiss her, she instantly recoils. He tells her to stop lying to herself and goes away. When Travis finds Abby, she's still drinking. He worries that at this rate, she will get alcohol poisoning and tries to get her to calm down a little. Abby gets annoyed at him when he tells her that he put this party together just for her. She tells him she never asked him to do this. Travis tells her he only did it because he cares about her but Abby is too adamant. She tells him that he is too late and tomorrow their bet will be over and he won't have to see her again. She runs away from him and Travis chases her outside the building. In her drunken state, Abby gets mad and calls him a coward for running away from her instead of asking her who Mick was. She's angry that Travis thought she'd forgive him just because he threw her a big surprise party, during most of which he ignored her. Her outburst makes Travis mad as well. He tells her that he tried apologizing to her but she kept running away from him and then showed up at the party with Parker. He makes it clear to her that he can't walk away from her so it has to be her to do that. Abby responds to him by kissing him and then instantly vomits on his face. Travis takes care of a drunken Abby and washes her up. While taking care of her, he points out that the best part of her being drunk is that she won't remember a thing the next day, and so he can tell her that he's madly in love with her. Abby spends the rest of the night being a little prankster and making it difficult for Travis to take care of her. Later, she calls her dad and reminds him that it's her birthday. Mick tells her that he wants to see her for her birthday but he doesn't know where she is and Abby finally gives him her address. The next afternoon, Abby wakes up feeling well-rested and Travis tells her it's because he made sure that she drank a lot of water and took some meds before she slept off. She can't help but laugh at how the two of them are a disaster together as one night it was Travis who got drunk and the next it was her. Travis kickstarts her birthday with some breakfast in bed for her. Meanwhile, Abby realizes just how much she reeks and hops in the shower. When she gets out, she proposes to Travis that since it's her birthday and their last night together as roommates, they should do something special together. She gets Travis to give her a foot massage at first, but soon, things start to heat up between them and Abby, and Travis finally go all the way. The next morning, while Travis is asleep, Abby sneaks out of his apartment to go back to her dorm. On her way there, a man named Vince stops her and asks her to come with him. Abby refuses straight away but when he says that it's about her dad. Turns out Mick has been placing bad bets lately and owes Vince's boss a lot of money. If Abby doesn't comply, his boss will break Mick's legs. Abby has no choice but to go to Vegas with him. Meanwhile, when Travis finds her missing, he goes searching for Abby. In her dorm, he finds piles of money stuffed in her mattress. When America and Shepley arrive, a panicked Travis asks her where Abby is. He tells America that he knows all about Abby being Lucky 13. America tracks Abby's location and they find out she is in Vegas. Travis immediately leaves. When Abby arrives at the club and meets her dad, she realizes just how grave the situation is. Her dad owes someone $100,000. Her dad promises that he's doing his best to get over his addiction but he needs her help to get out of this situation. When a man named Benny arrives, he gets straight to the point and tells Abby to get him the money before midnight. Abby tries to reason with him, saying that 100 grand in a day is impossible to earn, but Benny knows Abby's history well. She used to earn 30 grand in 30 minutes underground. Abby tells him that she's underage and she can't afford to get caught. Benny threatens to cut off Mick's finger and Abby has no choice but to do as he says. While getting dressed for the night, Abby makes sure to keep a taser on her. She enters the casino in a beautiful dress and with purpose. She certainly knows exactly what she is doing. Abby sits at a table where a high-stakes poker game is on, and pretends to be a dumb bimbo who is here at a bachelorette party. She buys into the game despite the men's protests, and it's not long before Abby earns 100 grand, all the while fooling the men into thinking she's a nobody. Abby is just about to leave the casino with the money when she gets stopped by a security guard. When she sees who it is, Abby is a little relieved to know it's her old friend, Jessie. The two have a friendly chat and then Abby rushes to get out of there. But Jessie stops her right there and takes away the chips she just won because she is underage, and this is illegal. Abby begs him to not do this because she's in big trouble and needs the money, but Jessie doesn't let up. In the end, helpless and scared, Abby calls her dad and tells him that she got caught. She asks him to run away for now and they'll figure this out later. Mick tells her that he'll leave that night and hike to Denver. Abby is in tears and apologizes to him for letting him down. When she returns empty-handed to Benny, he doesn't care about why she lost the money and gets his men on Mick's tail. In the meantime, Travis arrives at the scene. Benny tells Abby that since the legal age to gamble in California is 18, he will sponsor all her entrance fees and they can split the profits 50 minus 50. Abby tells him that she doesn't want to play poker for a living and just wants to go to college. Just as the man tries to warn her, Travis breaks in, and seeing the scene in front of him, he misunderstands the situation. He breaks into a fight with the security but Abby runs away from there. Travis follows her, demanding an explanation. When they arrive at the hotel, Abby storms away from him as she is angry at him for meddling in her business. Travis reasons that he only wanted to protect her, but Abby tells him that she was handling it on her own. He gets angry at that because how can he know anything when she keeps so many secrets from him? 
In the heat of the moment, he tells her that he loves her and that whatever she's going through, they can figure it out together. Abby feels so angry because she's had enough crazy in her life already and she doesn't want any more of it. But Travis makes her crazy. The next second, Abby gives in to her heart's desires and kisses Travis. The two engage in a very aggressive makeout session and end up destroying the entire hotel room in their heated pursuit. At night, after she's asleep, Travis listens to a message from Benny on Abby's phone, warning her to call him back and repay the money her dad owes him. Travis worries about Abby and then sees an ad about a fight that can win him a lot of money. The idea makes sense to him and Travis calls up Benny, offering an idea to help him out. When Abby wakes up, she finds Travis gone. She then sees a text from America asking her to check out Shepley's post. When Abby does that, she finds out about Travis's fight and then she sees the video Travis sent her. In the video, Travis asks her to not be mad at him because he has worked out a deal with Benny to pay her debt to him by fighting for him. He tells her that he's left a rental car for her in the parking lot so she can get home. Later at night, Abby is in the parking lot when she overhears a conversation between her dad and Jesse. Turns out the money that Abby won was cashed by Jesse and Mick and the two of them played her, and now they're planning to skip town. She also finds out that her father set her up and now she has no choice but to work for Benny. As she thinks back on everything, Abby realizes how she was fooled by her father into believing that he was in trouble, when in reality, Benny just wanted her to join him and Mick helped him. Angry and hurt, Abby marches forward and attacks Jesse with the taser. Then she gets in the car and screams at her father for betraying her and setting her up. The man confesses to his sins and Abby throws him out of her life. She drives away, leaving her father behind and taking all of his stuff with her. On the road, she calls Travis and leaves him a message saying that he doesn't have to fight because they don't owe Benny anything. But it's too late now and Travis doesn't get her message before he hops in the ring. For the first time in his life, Travis is wary of his opponent who is called Chernobyl. He's a scary looking man. Though Travis puts on a good fight, he takes a couple of damaging hits. Meanwhile, Abby is trying to get into the show and struggles to make her way to Travis. When Shepley sees that the fighting is turning unfair, he tries to help Travis out by hitting Chernobyl, but ends up taking a lot of blows himself. And the situation isn't too good with Travis because he looks like he's not going to make it out alive. But just in time, Abby shows up and hits Chernobyl from behind with a chair. At the same time, an accidental fire breaks out in the arena and Abby is saved. She and Travis and Shepley get out of there just in time to escape a big mishap. Safely back in their hotel room, Abby assures America that everything is fine now. Later, she asks Travis why he always calls her Pigeon. It's a bird that poops on people's heads. Travis tells her that to him, it's a dove, an attractive girl, a winning poker hand. Abby finally confesses her love to him and the two end an exciting day on a good note. The next day, after they send Shepley home on Travis's bike, Abby and Travis prepare to leave in Abby's car when Travis finds a bag in there. Abby tells him that it belongs to Jesse. When Travis opens it up, beneath the pile of clothes, he finds a bottle of liquor and a buckload of money. Abby tells him that she won that money fair and square and it's hers to keep now. The two celebrate with alcohol and decide to spend another night in Vegas. In the end, we are graced with pictures of Abby and Travis getting married in Vegas along with their friends.